welcome to Behind the Music, our Friday edition of Daily Hope. This weekend at Victory, we're concluding our series called God Calls, and we're talking about the prophet Elijah. Now, you might be aware of the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel. He goes up there to have kind of this competition with the prophets of Baal. They want to see whose God is the true God. There are 450 of them, and they're going to do all the bells and whistles to try and make Baal light their altar on fire. Elijah is the only prophet of God, and ultimately it turns out that he is worshiping the true God. Fire comes down, 450 false prophets wind up getting killed, the famine is over, the rain comes, there's this great victory for Elijah, and then he realizes that he's just had 450 of evil Queen Jezebel's prophets put to death, and she's not happy with him. So he runs away very, very far, 40 days, finds himself holed up in a cave, hiding out because he wants to save his life. And God calls to him and says, Elijah, what are you doing? Go outside of the cave and I'm going to pass by. So Elijah listened. He went outside the cave. And first there was this really turbulent wind that went through. Whoosh, and then there was an earthquake. The Lord wasn't in either one of those. And then after all of this you know, loud and bombastic and powerful, there was a still, small voice that spoke, and he realized that was God. This last weekend, I played a concert here at Victory, and my final piece on the program was by the Finnish composer Jean Sibelius. His Finlandia is undoubtedly his most well-known piece. He composed it in 1899, and it was played by the Helsinki Philharmonic in Paris for the 1900 World Exhibition. So people from all over the world got to hear this piece, and it gained him some great notoriety. I think this piece really kind of tells this story of Elijah in the cave with the winds and the earthquake, and then hidden in the middle, if you're listening, is this still small voice. So this piece was obviously originally written for orchestra, but I think the arrangement that I have by the English composer Herbert Fricker is really cool. It transfers pretty well to the organ, and so I want to just demonstrate some of these pieces for you. First of all, we have strings and brass and timpani. I get to play timpani with my feet. It's all kind of, you know, it's a little bit of make-believe, but come on, let me show you how I can do this for you. So it starts out, we have our our brass and our timpani going on here. You hear the timpani? That's my pedal. I get to be a timpanist. All right, cool. So there we have it. Kind of builds and kind of grows. As we go on, we get to have some effect of the wind. More timpani. So fun. So we've got wind, we've got earthquake, we have all this stuff going on. It goes into this really cool march-like section here. timpani, earthquakes, winds, horns, all the show, all of this pomp and circumstance, right? And then nestled in the middle is this really gorgeous chorale. And the text of it was written by a Lutheran nun in the uh, early 1700s. We don't have any other, other poems translated into English, but this one, Be Still My Soul, has become sort of popular and well-known. So I want to read you my favorite verse from this poem from this hymn. Verse 2. Be still, my soul, for God will undertake to guide the future surely as the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be clear at last. Be still, my soul. The waves and winds still know the voice that calmed their fury long ago. So even though there's all this power in nature, winds and earthquakes and so on and so forth, there's still a voice much more powerful than that. And sometimes we just have to be still and know 
who really is God. So I hope you listen to this chorale. Take a minute, listen for that quiet voice in your life. Enjoy this piece by Sibelius, and I look forward to being with you again next week.